Andrew's Workshop Projects Part 12 Still looking at suitable engines for the next project Once again I show the examples of what we are discussing The Corliss engine is not recommended for beginners We also look at the Stuart 504 boiler mounting In the opening image you've just been looking at a model Corliss engine and as you can see it's very complicated These two Stuart engines are less complicated but still quite difficult to build if you are a beginner, pick a suitable engine. And by the way, do not try and build an oscillating cylinder engine. They are simple, but not exactly easy to make. For any beginners out there who have a lathe with a centre height of 3.5 inches or more, I always recommend the Stuart Models Victoria. It's simple to build, and most of the parts are large and not fiddly at all. Here's a clip of the first Stuart Victoria I ever built many years ago. I built it using a Myford ML7R lathe. It seems like only yesterday, but it was way back in 1989. As you can see from this clip, taken from a VHS tape, it ran very well. Back now to Andrew's workshop and some live audio. Andrew's just said that before he dies, and he's, he's actually looking quite well at the moment, sometimes I say to people, I wouldn't buy a long playing record, but Andrew's looking quite well. He says he would like to build a Corliss engine, that's an engine with what's known as Corliss valve gear. As far as I'm aware, Blackgate's engineering sell the castings and drawings for a Corliss engine. And as I've just spoken to Jackie at Blackgate's engineering and asked about the Corliss engine, yes, they supply castings and drawings for the model. Here's an extract from a video I made about Southworth engines that were acquired by Blackgate's engineering a few years ago. This is the Corliss engine. It uses Corliss valve gear, which is what you find in normal mill engines. It's not that complicated when you break it down, but to look at to start off with, it's very complicated. And relative to the slide valve versions of Stevenson's link valve gear found on many model engines, this one is far more difficult to make. When the man who invented the Corliss engine, and this is a sort of a, a video that I did watch, they actually ended up naming the town Corliss and then went out of business then they renamed the town. <laughs> so what about the nine then Andrew what do you think about it? Well having seen yours um, I have to say it, it is a pretty looking engine and it's different to what I've previously now made. It's a good compromise for a Victoria I think you will find making a Victoria a little bit too simple. When people say to me, what should the first engine I build be, I say a Stuart Victoria. Uh, I started making a series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine, and I used the Victoria as an example. Right. But when it got down to the finishing bits of, you know, threading and sticking on the crosshead guides, I sort of lost interest because if by the time you've got there, when you've bored the cylinder, turned the flywheel, made the connecting rod, the rest of it you don't need to be told how to do it. So I stopped it at episode 43. Maybe sometime in the future, if things go quiet, I may finish the series, but it's not looking likely. I cover all the important parts. The first Stuart engine I ever built was a, a Stuart Victoria, and I modified the design of machining the cylinder. I didn't like the flat lump of it on the top, so I machined them off. And I remember that it ran very, very well. I gave it to my parents. Both my parents smoked a lot. And it never went rusty because in their lounge, there was so much nicotine floating about, all the metal parts got thoroughly coated. Finally, I was given it back after my father died, and he didn't die of lung cancer. It was bladder cancer, which was same as Fred Didner. And um, my mother said, do you want that engine back? And I said, why don't you want it? She said, no, I hate the bloody thing. Oh, that's, that's I said, oh, at least you're honest, yeah, I'll be back. And I actually sold it to my friend in Portsmouth who recently died, so who knows, maybe I'll get it back again. Can we have a look at planning where, I mean, there's not a lot of space, but planning where we're going to put things to use this boiler plant? Moving around the other side, as you can see, this is Andrew's boiler plant. And there, once again, is the preheater condenser and there's the trusty 504 boiler. Andrew's thinking about making this into a self-contained boiler plant with everything on it, including an injector, and we're looking at the potential layout. I've suggested 
making a tall steam turret that fastens on this side of the boiler. Very much like on the 501 boiler on the steam plant I've just been rebuilding because it keeps the pipe short, you can clad the pipe in string, keep the steam nice and hot, the 504 has a superheater and also that means that your hands are not near any other parts that are going to be hot. And you want three taps really, so you can run two engines simultaneously and the third tap so that if you're running on compressed air you can isolate the boiler. Yes. If you shut that tap on the boiler and put the pipe from the compressed air into the turret, that way you can inject oil into that line and it will go to the engines, it won't go back to the boiler. Smart. You may be wondering how Andrew's mounted this boiler because it's really quite solid. Well, it's moving because it's on the table, but the boiler isn't really mounted to anything spectacular except some blocks inside. It's the early type of Stuart boiler which doesn't have the feet on. Andrew's going to disconnect the check valve so we can lift the boiler off and show how it's put together. And the mounting is simpler than you think. Oh, metric. Having said that, I've just bought some M6 metric bolts for that sweet pea that I'm working on. The cylinders are held on with M6 bolts. But it works. It's self-aligning, it doesn't go anywhere. A perfect fit. And it's better than the little feet that fracture very easily. That's about it for this episode. In the next one, Andrew and I put pen to paper with some design ideas for a turret. All I have to say is stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.